Fairy tales offer you the chance to escape into a wonderful, fantastical world, travelling across beautiful lands, meeting a colourful cast of characters, and wrapping it all up nicely in a happily ever after. Unless you're from Scandinavia, where the lack of light from those long winters have translated into their stories which have become very... very dark. And Bramble the Mountain King draws heavily from this folklore as you take control of young Ole, who's braving the forests and wilds on a mission to track down his missing sister, all whilst undergoing a roller coaster of emotions that'll at times give him the warm fuzzies when he's not on the phone trying to get an emergency appointment with his therapist. And for you to see with your own eyes the treats and traumas that our young lad has to go through, here are seven of the most adorable and abhorrent moments from within the game. Major spoilers ahead for the whole story. <laughs> we as a species don't have any superpowers, except for one, which we're all born with and some get to hold on to longer than others, and that is being cute. I mean, look at this picture. That was me as a baby. It fades. And much like how we get a huge dose of adorableness at the beginning of our lives, thus is the same for our young protagonist's journey, as very early on in his adventure, he stumbles across a local race of gnomes. These diminutive, cone-headed, red-hatted delights live such a simple, carefree life that they often find themselves in trouble and in need of rescuing, which we are more than happy to oblige to do. Maybe it's because they have their hats pulled down so far over their eyes that they can't actually see what they're getting into, but we forgive them for that because look how squishy and cuddly they are! And what's more, their little village will give you serious location envy because what a joy it would be to while away your hours here. If I were to try to replicate this living situation here in the UK, it would probably cost me a lifetime salary just to be able to get a place and there'd probably be a fracking site around the corner. With their cutesy charms and incoherent babbling, why would we ever want to leave here? Of course we'll take part in a spirited game of hide and seek, you go off and we'll find you. And of course we'll help you out with rounding up your produce for your farm, you just rest and I'll run around to corral your crops. Hang on, have we just been putting in a load of effort and doing a load of free labour because they're cute? I mean, it happens. Look at this face. Could you say no to this face? Could you? <sighs> Look at his eyes. So full of joy. Gone. The thing is with sense of security is that you only ever hear that phrase when it's false and that's exactly what you'll be experiencing here. For every moment of adorable cutesy cuddliness, there's a massive dose of darkness and despair waiting for you around the corner, ready to smack you in the face with fermented herring. Take the previously met gnomes, we would do anything to help them out, no matter the problem. And so when we find a bunch of them locked up in a cage, we'll go out of our way to liberate them and chaperone them back to their dinky domicile. Don't worry about lifting your hats above your eyes, you precious little nuggets of sweetness, just follow our lead and we'll bring you home. Yep, that's right, these gnomes can die in a pretty horrific oh my gosh how much blood came out of that little body kind of way. And as scarring and traumatic as it is to see these tiny mounds of whimsy snapped up in the rusty jaws of a bear trap, it does at least shine a light on the fact that apparently their heads fill the entirety of the hat, which quite frankly, is even more horrific to think about. But if we manage to safely lead them through the trap field, hopefully with minimal casualties, they'll at last have a chance to rest and relax. And oh, who's this? A visitor stopping by, perhaps a new friend, and it's completely crushed them. Trampled them to death. They were better off in the bear traps. And if you have any shred of emotion still intact after that senseless ordeal, don't worry, there are still plenty more opportunities for a complete empathyectomy. For after we've accidentally crushed the leader of the Pinecone tribe under our body weight, we can turf out the sole remaining witness, perhaps rooted to the spot out of shock of what it had seen, and kick this furry football into a slurry of blood and viscera down below in order to get an achievement. But don't worry, there's more! For as we avoid the monster lurking under the awful ocean, there's a gnome! trapped in a cage. Can we free it? No, but we can push it in in order to get yet another achievement. Emotional damage on a huge scale. But the question is, who are the real monsters? Those who go around destroying the local fey folk? Or us, who actively seek to end their lives just to get a few points for our gamer tag? Hmm, makes you think. There's a surprising amount of death within this game. A game, which may I remind you, is about a 10-year-old boy exploring a fairy tale world. I just want to re-emphasize the setting. 
make sure we all know what Olya is going through. But ah oh well. That's life. And life and death come together here in a surprising way. When, after you've made your way through a church in a village ravaged by a mysterious plague, you come across something you may not have expected. Zombies. That's right, these Zack Snyder paced Draugas will make a beeline for you if you cross their eye line. Luckily, a lot of them are hunkered over the remains of a corpse. Again, this is a game about fairy tales. And so sneaking around them and keeping to the tall grass is imperative. Except for one heart pounding moment when you have to use yourself as bait in order to pull them away from their afternoon snack. But after avoiding the smorgasbord and the stragglers wanting a taste of what's equivalent to Homo sapien veal, it should be plain sailing from here on out, right? wrong. Because to proceed on our path to the mountain where our sister is being held, we have to make our way through these darkened houses. Not a worry, we can just use our spark of courage to light the way, right? Again, wrong. The interiors are littered with silent shufflers who will spring into action at the mere hint of luminescence. So if you happen to be afraid of the dark and of the reanimated dead sprinting towards you wanting to hunt you down to snack on your flesh, you may find the game sits in the middle of that Venn diagram. Just, just there. One of the biggest questions in Bramble the Mountain King that doesn't get answered, because it doesn't really need to, is how tall are the children of the tale? For their house and some other structures seem normal sized, but when seeing how big a deer is and nearly getting crushed by this apple, you realise that maybe we're a little more titchy than previously thought. But that's totally fine, because if we're smaller, then that means some of the already small things will appear bigger. Here is a hedgehog. I think it speaks for itself as to why it's included on the cute list. It's the size of our player character. It curls up when you go near it. It is the most precious, wonderful, delicate thing that I have ever seen in my entire life. And then we have to say goodbye to it and never see it again until around an hour later when it is down by the pond side and we can pet its snout and it is wearing a saddle and we can ride it across the water directing it with a worm on a stick and I'm agog. Utterly agog at how magnificent this prickly steed is. How is this not game of the year? How is a game with the bestest boy not game of the year? Agog. <laughs> to quote the immortal words of Snap, rhythm is a dancer. It's the soul's companion. You can feel it everywhere. Lift your hands and voices. Free your mind and join us. You can feel it in the air. And these are good words to remember as you get pied pipered by the water decayed living corpse that is Nacken. This one time talented musician was bullied by the townsfolk so mercilessly that he eventually played forbidden melodies that made everyone dance so much until their flesh ground away from their limbs, still twitching after death to the beat he was making. Gloria Estefan was right, the rhythm is gonna get you. But upon seeing that his love had also fallen afoul to these tunes, Nacken decided to drown himself in the lake where he now lives on as a fiddler of the damned, and we just so happen to stumble in on his deadly open mic night. It's not the fact that he has a supernatural ability to control our bodies, or that he gives us our first proper jump scare acting out the ring, or the fact that he can have us cosplaying as Eren Jaeger's mother, it's the fact that even after you manage to escape he still tracks you down and is relentless in his pursuit even to the bitter end. See that determination in his eyes? He's not letting you go without you leaving a tip. This is why you should pay your artists. Look what happens when you don't. <laughs> On the journey through this folklore world, there are plenty of different things that you can collect. Figurines, achievements, an ever-growing list of triggers for your PTSD. But you know what the best thing we can find along the way is? A new friendship, in the form of the cold-bodied, warm-hearted Lamus. We come across this Geodude knockoff as he's being accosted by the Pinecone tribe, possibly enraged by seeing their leader getting crushed and fellow comrade being kicked into the slurry below. Not gonna apologize, it's happened, let's move on. And once we manage to clobber them all, our stony-faced friend is free, and the friendship is instantaneous. He's there through our hardest times. He'll offer us a helping hand, he'll take us into his arms to protect us from the encroaching evils, and he'll even be there as the world crashes down around us. For though his body is made of stone, it's his friendship that makes him rock steady, for Lamus never forgets his friends. And we'll never forget you, Lamus. Thank you for everything. Just go. Though 
our main goal is to find our missing sister, on the way we happen to stumble into various stories that are already in progress. Whether it be the remains of a village after a literal witch hunt, a shape-shifting beauty who lures men to their deaths, or dealing with an Ingmar Bergman-inspired embodiment of pestilence and death who fights us within our own minds. But one of the most disturbing chapters of this tale, and that's a big claim considering the things we've already discussed on this list, is when Ole has to travel through the swamp and cross paths with the Cair Haxen. We're introduced to her the moment we set foot into the wetlands, as we spot her strung up on a crucifix for all to see. Is this customary in Scandinavia? I mean, I, I don't know, I've never been. Maybe it's normal, but what isn't is the decayed sheep skull she's wearing as a helmet. Again, no judgement, maybe it's a cultural thing. I mean, here in Britain we have cheese rolling and nettle eating competitions, so who am I to judge? We then discover a rather disturbing plot involving a woman who, in the pursuit of power, is set to sacrifice a newborn baby to the devil. I'm not sure how that promotion would look on LinkedIn, but unfortunately we are too late to stop it going ahead, and what follows is a rather harrowing scene about a young lad having to bury the toddler in a shallow grave. And that's not before we're floating on the water having a nightmarish face-off with the cursed midwife who's hell-bent on stealing our soul. Remember at the beginning when it was just about cute little gnomes? This game gets dark. It gets really dark. And there we go, folks. That was a list of seven lovely and loathsome moments from Bramble the Mountain King. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure to like if you like this, comment down below your thoughts, and subscribe to stick around for more content. If you want to see my Bramble playthrough where I get all 100% of the achievements, feel free to check out the video. It'll be here listed somewhere in the description below as well. And I'm going to be doing this for different games each two weeks. Two weeks focusing on a game and I will do an achievement run through collecting all of the achievements. I'll also do a list. I'll also do a review and I'll do other videos as well. So make sure to comment which games you think I should play next. I'm excited to do the next one. Stick around. And yes, that's the end of the video. Luck and more to you all. Catch you next time.